Linty live from a countryside in Derbyshire in UK. I'm walking next to a field which is covered with geese poo. So I'm very unsteady on my feet. I better actually stop moving. Anyway, so today I actually wanted to talk about why visualization, meditation, journaling may not always work for us. And I know it's something that I have been going through. And recently I had this epiphany, which I just felt like sharing, sharing today, really. So... You know, sometimes when you sit there and you visualize something or you maybe meditate, journal, whatever the practice is, and we're so consciously in that moment, we are reading through our affirmation sheets, we are meditating, we're f focusing on this, um, on this outcome, on the goal that we're striving towards, whether it's a health or money or a certain relationship, and we feel invincible. Yesterday I actually did an um, Instagram story on that with the Jenga block, you know, how strong that foundation is. We come out of there, out of the meditation, we're feeling on top of the world, we feel like unshakable, we feel so empowered. And then a few hours later, we walk into a room, into the kitchen, or somebody comes to see us, maybe it's our partner, and we share our vision and dreams and beliefs with them, and they say, well... You're never going to have that. Or, well, you've been doing it for a year, so what's going to be different? You know, I don't see any of what you're sharing with me. I don't see it in this physical world. It's not really happening around you. And straight away, we get into that state of self-defense. We either shut down and we're no longer able to communicate with that, or we get very shaking. We actually start believing whatever they're projecting, their insecurities, their misbeliefs, they're projecting on us. We start believing that. Or maybe we completely lose our cool and we actually react rather than respond. And it's something I've also done in the past, you know, when I saw hard work on a certain goal and I visualized and meditated on it, I said affirmations, I journal and, and then my mom or somebody will ask me a question about it and I completely, I just fly off my handle. And then I would think to myself, why did I just react that way? And the reason really why we do that is because... We must realize that when we set affirmations and goals and we strive towards them, we do it on a very conscious level. But only about 5% of what we do is conscious and everything, you know, the remaining 95 is unconscious. So on a deep level, we have not embodied ourselves. We have not embodied that version we want to become. We have not embodied that, you know, if you're working on a health goal, that healthier version that you're becoming or the wealthier version or the more abundant or this... Uh, having a most incredible relationship we have not integrated every single aspect of the future of our future selves into our existing reality and that's why there is a big mismatch and all it takes is just one little poke and for our old foundation to crumble down and another reason why it may also not work and I actually invite you to maybe go back like to your childhood or maybe like your early teens or you know whenever really at the time in your life when it felt like no matter what you wished and what you desired would just manifest in your life, you know, whether it was maybe like a child, you wanted a bicycle or something for Christmas or for your birthday, and all of a sudden, pff, voila, you got it. You know, I remember I was about 24, and it was the first time I wanted to buy a house. I was living in South Africa then, and my dad said to me, I will help you with a deposit, with half a deposit. We're going to go half-half, and the rest of the money, he said, I don't care how you're going to get it, but... That's, that's on your shoulders. And I remember going to work and thinking, how am I going to get the money? I just did not have that money. And I had to give the agency an answer by like end of the next week. So I did not know anything about manifesting. It wasn't back then. It was like 90s. No, maybe, I can't remember. Early 2000s, maybe. I knew nothing about that. But I remember writing in a piece of paper the amount of money I want and when I needed buy. And then I just put it in my pocket and I completely forgot about this. Guys, you won't believe that. The following week, I received an email from a pension fund, right, saying that they owe me uh, some, well, it was a substantial, a lot of money back then for me, amount of money, and it was going to be transferred into my account within like three or four working days. That amount of money was exactly what I needed for my deposits. And, you know, when I go back in time and I see how many how many times really things have manifested in my life when I really strongly desire them. And if I look now, I'm like, why is it so much more difficult for things to appear in a physical form? And the reason for that, guys, the reason for that is attachment. Because we're so focused, we're so fixated on these results um, that we so want to bring in our lives that we are meditating, we're journaling on them. 
and we are attaching to them. And every time we attach to something, we're projecting an energy of lack. And that's what we receive back is lack. So, you know, when I just kind of realized those two things and I looked back in my life and I looked back on how supported I was throughout my childhood, throughout even my, you know, the time when I was a a grown up, it just blows my mind how the universe always has my back. But yet I also, you know, I go through phases where I doubt myself, I doubt my actions, I doubt whether I'm going to achieve things like that. And I just wanted to remind you that if you had to go look back into your life, you may be surprised to realize how many times the the universe had your back also. Um, and on a final note, I also wanted to add, especially regarding visualization, that not all of us are really designed to be able to visualize. So I've already spoke about various energy centers in our body, and there are nine energy centers according to human design. One of them is Ajna, and Ajna, it's also correlated to Ajna Chakra in Hindu system. And about 70% of us, more or less, have it undefined. And what that means when, when I say undefined is that we don't have consistent energy in, in, in the Ajna center. And when we don't have a consistent energy, we are very fluid in our thinking. We're not really meant to hold onto ideas and believe. And often we get ideas and beliefs from the collectives, from the environments around us, from people who surround us, and they may not be even ours. So it's literally the thoughts are coming in and they're going out. So that's why for us to hold on to a vision, to hold on to a certain pattern, to a certain belief and try to conceptualize it in our minds, it's pretty much impossible. So, um, you know, because that's something I've been struggling in my meditations, in my visualization, and I'm thinking, why can I... Can I just not fix my mind on something that I really want? Why am I always, you know, flowing, kind of going like with the flow? My mind is just all over the place. And that is why. And just even realizing it, that it's it's in my energy. It's in my energy field. There is nothing wrong with me. I'm not a crap meditator. I can still meditate without actually fixing my mind on something. And I can still get things in my life by by keeping my energy by keeping my vibrations up high that was just really really helped me and helped me to to stop beating myself up for not being a good enough meditator anyway just wanted to share that with you and i hope you have a lovely rest of your day and i will check in sometime later bye for now